Well, good morning. It's Wednesday morning. Glad you joined us here in the middle of the week. And uh, for our study on Joshua, I hope you've had a good uh, Tuesday and a, a good morning so far this morning. Uh, we're looking at Joshua, and we're talking about how to turn our defeats into victory and how to rise up after we've been defeated. In uh, Joshua chapter 7, we saw where Joshua was terribly, uh, the whole army of Israel was terribly defeated at a little town called Ai after such a great victory in Jericho. And uh, we've likened it to some of the experiences that we have. Uh, we get a great victory, and then right after that, we're so vulnerable, thinking we were strong enough to handle anything, that we come up against even a, a, a lesser uh, obstacle. And, uh, and we fall apart and we get defeated. Now, the problem with a lot of us is we tend to lay there and wallow in our self-pity. And uh, I know I sound like an old coach or something when I tell you to get up and do it again. But that's what you do. That's, you take the, the, the defeat and you turn the defeat into victory. And as I said, if you get up one more time than you've been knocked down, then you've learned how to walk in victory. Now, how did how did uh, Joshua do that? Well, we've already looked at the fact that he didn't let uh, his defeat define him or distract him, either one. Uh, but he he got up and he began to deal with the issues that caused the defeat. And the first thing he did, he had to learn, we talked about that yesterday, is that he had to deal with the sin that brought the defeat. Uh, that we all have failures in our life and uh, that uh, we have to realize that, that there's sin in our lives that we have to repent of and confess before the Lord. And then the second thing we have to do is to make absolutely sure that we are following the instructions of God. Now, let me tell you something. There are a lot of people giving instructions, giving advice, they're giving you five ways how to, uh, five life hacks that you can melt 48 pounds off of your body overnight. Uh, they're telling you how to have a happy marriage. They're telling you why you should vote for somebody. They're, they've got all the answers. But my friend, listen to me and listen good. Come in here close, get a good sip. You better make sure you're following the instructions of God and not the instructions of our culture. Yesterday, I was having lunch with my granddaughters, three of them that live here. One of them said, uh, Doc, tell us to do something in your mean grandpa voice. <laughs> you've just heard my green, my mean, maybe green, you've just heard my mean grandpa voice. You better make sure you're not following the culture. You better make sure that you're not following a false word. You better make sure that you're not applying a recipe for failure to your life that's already in defeat. You and I both better make sure, absolutely sure, that we're following the instructions of God. Let me read to you out of chapter 8 and just a few of the first verses. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. Have you been afraid? We all have. Fear is a monster. He's also a liar, but he is a monster. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Ever been there? Ever been discouraged? Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go up and attack Ai. Wait a minute, Lord. That's what we just did. And we were defeated, humiliated. And you want me to do it again? Wait a minute. I skipped something. He does say don't get discouraged. He does tell us don't give up. You get up, brush yourself off, and don't give up and quit. Don't be afraid and don't be discouraged. Go up and attack Ai. But let me tell you what he inserted there. He said, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. 
take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. But use all of your resources that God has given you. Take the whole army of God with you. Make sure you have the forces of God with you. That comes through prayer. It comes through a lot of things. But what it means is listen to God's instruction. Or first of all, listen for God's instructions. And that's what he did. He said, go up and attack Ai with a whole army. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai. God starts at the top. He said, I'm going to deliver into your hand the guy that's given orders. I'm going to deliver into your hands the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. And let me just give you something familiar, Joshua. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Joshua, remember the victories? He says, listen to my instructions and you're going to find the same victories you found when you listened to my instructions before. He said, and you'll do to Jericho, to Ai as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. He said, you're not only going to defeat them, you're going to get something out of it. So use all of your resources. Take the whole army of God. Listen for God's instructions. And then follow God's instructions. Whew, what a great strategy. The old flanking maneuver and the ambush. And then just as Joshua did, and we'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow, claim God's blessings, not just victory, but the livestock and the plunder. You can do what Achan did, but this time with my permission. Man, when we pray according to God's will, he says, I thought you'd never ask. Here's what you wanted, and here's so much more. Well, God bless you. You have a great midweek and we'll see you in the morning and we'll talk a little bit more about following God's instructions and using failures and victories to renew our walk with the Lord. God bless you. See you tomorrow.